In this module, we will focus on containerization technology. We will go over the evolution of computing, software development, and DevOps processes. We will witness how the increase in scale and complexity has led to the popularity of containers and container-related technologies like Docker. It has been some years since Mark Andreessen, the founder of Mosaic and Netscape, coined the phrase, software is eating the world. But indeed, it is true today. The idea that every company needs to become a software company is considered almost a cliche. No matter your industry, you are expected to be reimagining your business to make sure you are not the next local taxi company or hotel chain caught completely off guard by your equivalent of Uber or Airbnb. Modern day software consists of ubiquitous mobile apps and websites. Many of these apps and web applications are a critical part of our daily lives. We rely on them from mundane tasks like paying bills, everyday banking, getting in touch with our colleagues and loved ones. Doing business in the 21st century means embracing a world where software quite literally powers everything, from televisions to cars and from social media to banking systems. Let's explore the implications of this advancement by looking at the evolution of computing over the years. Software development has seen a paradigm shift in the last few decades. From the beginning of computing era in the 1960s up to late 1990s, the software was built by relatively small teams. These teams used large monolithic software stacks to build relatively simple and smaller applications which were used by one to a few tens of people. These applications were deployed on a central network server which the users connected via their terminals and use the application. These terminals use proprietary protocols to connect to the central servers. Then, in late 1990s, web started to gain tremendous popularity. The web applications began to grow in size and complexity. We needed few more people in our engineering departments to build these applications. They began using layered stacks and specialized components for different parts of the system. These web applications were deployed on small to mid-sized server farms and users connected to these applications over the public internet using their web browsers and popular TCP and HTTP protocols. Now comes the current era of ubiquitous connectivity and ever-increasing adoption of mobile computing. To cater to these demands, the modern mobile apps and web applications are reaching global scale and billions of users. These app and web applications are built by larger teams which are geographically distributed. They build those large applications by stitching together a collection of services, APIs or microservices. These services use a variety of stacks and are independent of each other. The services run on clusters spanning thousands or tens of thousands of servers or nodes. And the consumers use these applications over the cloud and the public internet using their mobile, tablet, and desktop devices. Since software release cycles are an essential part of software development process, it also evolved along with the overall software development paradigm shift. Here again, from the beginning of computing era to the late 1990s, the software release cycles were longer. The software was delivered on physical media like floppy disks and compact disks. New versions of the software was released after months or years and distributed physically to the end consumers. Then, as the web became popular, we shifted to shorter release cycles and speedy deployments on our web farms. You could now build a feature and release it to the web within a few days to a few weeks. The web applications needed to be available to the users 24-7 with least amount of disruption. So our maintenance window for these web applications shrank. And in the current day and age, the release cycles are much shorter. 
the DevOps processes have been automated and teams can develop and deploy a new feature or a bug fix within minutes. Continuous integration, continuous delivery and continuous deployment practices are becoming really popular these days. And these DevOps processes are helping teams build test and deploy code faster and more reliably. Some teams and companies have taken these PD deployments to the next level and they deploy their code several hundred times on any given day. Since the audience is global and they are always connected, we have very limited or zero maintenance windows. This means that ideally our applications need to be up and running without ever going down even for a few seconds. By the way, we have some excellent courses on DevOps practices available. Please do check them out as well. To continue our discussion on the evolution of mobile computing over the years, let's review the modern day scene in software deployment Sphere. You can segregate application components into specialized frameworks. Web applications are written in languages like Python, JavaScript, Java, c -sharp, etc. The background workers use Python, Java, Erlang, and so on. Front-end uses preprocessors like LESS and SAS. Queuing systems use RabbitMQ, ZeroMQ, and so on, which themselves are written in various languages. Furthermore, the deployment targets have also gotten more sophisticated. Once upon a time, the typical stack was just a simple server with our software bits deployed on top of it. But now, the deployment stacks are much more diverse, distributed, loosely coupled and complex. You can deploy the code into multiple private environments or put it on your private cloud, maybe public or hybrid cloud. These environments run various operating systems or multiple versions of the same operating system. So basically, the software stack is much more complex using different languages and different frameworks which are in a state of constant improvement and revision. And of course, all this code needs to be deployed in a variety of target hardware and virtual environments that we just discussed. The system starts its journey on a development workstation and then goes through staging, QA and production environments. This inevitably gives rise to some compatibility challenges. The web application can only run on a certain flavor and version of Linux and the database can only run on a particular version of another operating system. And this gives rise to the compatibility matrix of Doom which, if you are in the profession of writing and shipping software, you must be well familiar with it in one way or the other. If not, you will get familiar with it in due course of time. We have permutations of all different software components multiplied with all the possible target environments where our code might need to run today or one day. So all of a sudden, we have an exponential amount of complexity to deal with. We need to ensure that every intersection of this matrix somehow works. Tests pass in the same way on every intersection of that matrix. For instance, the tests need to pass in our local dev environment, then in our local integration environment, and then in QA and production environments. And of course, this does not always work as planned. A typical example is when everything is working perfectly okay on our dev workstation with a certain version of Python libraries and certain version of the libc, certain version of the operating system, when the same code is deployed in production environment, it does not work because the Python package or the Ubuntu version did not exactly match the version on our workstation. Such a software-driven world requires solutions that can solve specific problems while reducing capital costs, the time it takes to implement new functionality and deploy new infrastructure quickly. Modular design techniques and container-based solutions are the answer. Let's explore what these are. 
Let's come back around to the complexity problem in a software development and deployment scenario. Like most problems, when we look for a solution, it is always better to look at other similar problems already solved by people before us. A very apt analogy for the problem can be drawn using the shipping industry. For centuries, humanity has had to ship stuff all over the world. This stuff came in various sizes, shapes, containers, and characteristics. The shipping industry had to figure out how these goods could be handled, what kind of truck could be used to haul them into the shipyard, what kind of cranes could be used to load them into the ship, etc. etc. The process of shipping our goods was tightly coupled with the goods to be shipped. Each provider of goods and the shipper needed to have specialized personnel and equipment to handle and store the goods. They needed to maintain all the expertise and infrastructure ready to go. So it made for very brittle, expensive and cumbersome process. Representing this concern in the matrix, we can see that the situation resulted in a similar matrix of compatibility. Possible types of product to be shipped multiplied by the possible mode of transportation or shipping, with an ultimate goal of making goods reach their destination safe and intact. Some 50 years ago, someone had a brilliant idea, a container, called the intermodal container. The shipping industry standardized the size, the weight, shape, dimensions, doors, locks, mechanisms, and identification features for the containers. I'm pretty sure we have all seen a lot of them in our lifetimes. With these standard containers, we can ship anything to any corner of the world, any size, any shape, you name it. Not only can you ship them conveniently and safely, you can stack them and ship them in a very efficient manner. And all of those different goods can be shipped at the same time. Not only that, the trucks and cranes needed to handle and transport these containers were also standardized. So no special equipment or expertise was required to handle different types of products. Now all of a sudden, we have a separation of concerns. So this separation of concerns brought about efficiency and automation, and it ended up changing the world economy because it is so much cheaper and reliable to ship things with containers. So if you are shipping coffee beans, then your only problem is to make sure that coffee beans fit snugly inside a container. You just fill up the container with coffee beans, lock and seal it securely. Then the shipper using a standard equipment will be able to take it from your warehouse, ship it and deliver it to your customer on the other end of the world. You just need to choose a standard shipper who knows how to handle these standardized containers. Therefore, you are not bound to one specialized shipper. Not only that, the future infrastructure providers and shippers can design their equipment based on this agreed upon container and it will be all compatible. No one will need to rejig their system to handle any type of goods. So it is future proof as well. You can focus on building faster and better infrastructure like better roads, faster ships, more efficient trucks, rather than worrying about the compatibility issues. So we basically went from this chaotic way of shipping products to this more organized, efficient, reliable and faster way of shipping products. So much so, this new method of shipping goods changed the world economy forever. Today, most cargo around the world is shipped in standard containers. Containers have brought about an enormous cost savings in shipping and logistics cost. Today, 5,000 ships deliver over 200 million containers per year. We can look around the room and we can quickly count the things which will not be in our rooms, our houses, if they were not shipped from other parts of the world. So the container solution solved the shipping problem and solved it really well. Coming back to our original problem, 
The goal here is to solve our compatibility matrix by moving away from the physical or virtual hardware. We can learn from the shipping analogy and solution and do the same thing for software as well. So just as we moved slowly away from physical servers to virtual servers, we start moving closer to these tiny little software containers which can contain all our code and can deploy it directly to our target environments in the exact same configuration as it ran in our development workstations. Let's take help of another analogy to understand use of containers on software development and deployment.